My book, The Art and Making of Fantasy Miniatures, is available now. Check out the link in the description to find out more. This is a review of The Art of Assassin's Creed Origins. I am a big, big fan of the Assassin's Creed games, and especially of the way they look and the worlds and just how well realized they are. And if this channel is any indication, I also kind of like art books. Yet, I've never been a fan of the Assassin's Creed art books, partially because I don't think they're well done at all in terms of what one should expect from a video game art book, but mostly it has to do with the fact that for whatever reason, the art has just never really enthralled me. Of course, that's just my personal opinion, and you may well have a completely different one. I would never want any personal dissatisfaction I have with the art to turn someone off a book they might otherwise enjoy, nor undermine the enthusiasm of anyone who does like it. The single most determining factor in whether or not you should get an art book is always how much do you like what you're seeing in the flip through. Often you don't even know why something does or doesn't appeal to you, it just does, and that's fine. However, since I am doing a review, I want to at least try and articulate my impression of Assassin's Creed art as a whole, just so you know where I'm coming from when I get into this Origins book more specifically. So I think the smallest contributing factor is because the predominant art style for Assassin's Creed concept art is that muddy digital painting style that lacks definition and detail, with a lot of sketchy skid marks over the top and around the edges that just make it feel unpolished and cheap. And so looking through the Assassin's Creed art books always makes me feel like I'm someone with poor vision who doesn't have their glasses on and so everything looks kind of blurred. The fact that the text on the back of this book claims fully rendered paintings is either a gross over-exaggeration or we have very different definitions of what fully rendered means. And listen, I'm not saying the artists aren't enormously talented. It is almost always epic and stunning work, just perhaps not rendered in a way I find especially appealing. But that feels like a minor issue. I think the major turnoff for me when it comes to Assassin's Creed concept art has more to do with the actual content of the art specifically what's being depicted and how it's being depicted. The art rarely inspires the sort of excitement it should, and I don't feel it reflects what I love about the games. It tends to be pretty gloomy and moody. In fact, the actual word that comes to mind when looking at Assassin's Creed concept art is quiet, which might seem like a strange word to describe visual art, but that's the most accurate way to convey the impression most of the art makes on me. Quiet, contemplative, and somber which actually sound like good words to describe a game about assassins, but to me it doesn't reflect the games which I think of as being so alive and exciting and richly detailed. Even though this Origins book largely follows the established art style, I feel it's a little less severe, to the point where this is the first time I liked the art more than I disliked any of the other problems the book has. But the main thing that's responsible for this appreciation is the Egyptian setting. I am completely in love with the Orientalist art from the late late 18th to early 20th centuries, and visions of Egypt, Arabia, anything exotic really has always captivated me. And so I can't help but be drawn to that imagery regardless of the style or whether I feel it reflects the game. I would have also expected that to be true of the art for the first Assassin's Creed and Black Flag, but for the previously mentioned reasons, that just wasn't the case. I think a lot of that also has to do with the art for Origins being a little less dour and embracing more of the exotic. One thing that really disappointed me with the game was how the Egyptian setting was gypped in terms of having to share the game with a Greco-Roman influence. Since today we're all already so familiar with ancient Egypt being in ruins and culturally dominated, I had hoped the game would be set during a period that would have shown Egypt in all its glory. The book's design is also very nice and has great visual appeal overall. However, it retains one minor and one major problem present in all Assassin's Creed art books. The minor issue is the reliance on images running across two pages, and I don't mean like as a full page spread, I mean having 75% of an image on one page and 25% on the other, or sometimes literally just an inch running over the opposite page, which at best is done to promote visual cohesion and balance across a spread and allow certain images to be larger. But this is often done at the expense of the artworks themselves, which are disrupted by and lost in the center crevice of the book. However, I will say, though I'm still not crazy about the approach, 
which this book has handled it pretty effectively as far as such things go. The major and much more serious offence, however, is that 90% of the images are way too large, which is especially unnecessary when A, this book's pages are huge, and B, because of the sketchy, smudgy, rough-around-the-edges style used by most of the art, these images tend to lack definition and detail, and so don't need to be this big. Character art for Assassin's Creed is usually a bit more detailed than the environment and key art, but even so, having a single image of a character take up an entire huge page is something I hate. Because even when that size is okay, there's usually a lot of space where they should have put other images or text on the page, which is very important because that leads to what I'm sure will be a point of huge dissatisfaction for a lot of people, and that is there is zero design exploration or evolution of the character designs. The only sort of exception being Cleopatra, who's shown with two other looks, and Bayek maybe has some different costume sketches, but basically he's the same as he appears in the game. But beyond that, we're not treated to any exploration of the character's designs, no alternative or unused ideas, nothing. Which is particularly frustrating when the text makes reference to that. So for example, with Layla, the accompanying commentary says, we went through a lot of iterations for Layla, yet the book only has one image of her looking exactly like she does in the game. Ditto the spread on Aya, the text says, we worked on several hair, face, and costume options, and yet what do we get? One full page artwork of her looking exactly like she does in the game, and on the other page just three, turnaround renders of her head, again, exactly how she looks in the game. Which is just so inexcusable when you have so many unnecessarily giant images taking up space which they could have used to include more stuff. Likewise, there's no discussion on why any of these characters were chosen for the game, or how they came about or developed in terms of who they are. Again, nothing. Now that we've got to the text, let me say it is possibly the worst I've ever read for an art book. Truly a despicable disgrace. Half of the words of the book's author, Paul Davies, the other half is commentary from the artists and such. And the overwhelming sensation you get from all of them is snake oil salesmen trying to pitch to you just how amazing this game world is. We did extensive historical research to make sure the player feels like they've gone back in time. Inane soundbite stuff that feels like you're reading a magazine magazine article designed to impress you, rather than actual behind the scenes or creative insight. Which is just such an embarrassing and worthless waste of time and space when your reader has already played the game, or is planning to anyway. And they're obviously not accounting for the latter anyway, since the book contains spoilers. Like, what percent of people get this book with no intention of playing the game, but are so awed by the text that they're then compelled to do so? It feels like someone giving you their resume after they've already been working for you for six months and it's like, yeah, we're past that, stop wasting my time. And the author and editors and developers know that, they're just lazy. There's also a lot of emphasis on recounting historical facts about certain locations, which in and of themselves are interesting, but not really why I'm here. I mean, even if that was the sole direction the book was going to take, being sort of a fact file to the things you're seeing, that'd be unexpected for an art book, but at least it would be something. Because as it stands, it just feels like occasional trivia with no indication of how that information is important to the art or the game's development. Any other text that falls outside those two categories is simply not interesting in the slightest. Just garbage. So much stating the obvious, describing things you're looking at, describing who the characters are, retelling the story, none of which is helped by the fact that I cannot stand the author's way of writing. It's what takes the text from being just boring to absolutely insufferable. His blathering embellishments for descriptions and information on things that are just so obvious or insipid, and I have never read such drivel in an art book before. I'll give you an example. So there's just a picture of a random helmet, and the accompanying text says, a Greek-style helmet that has seen better days, but is more intimidating now that it belongs to a bandit leader. Its battle-worn appearance reflects the I-don't-give-a-damn nature of its new owner. The fact that whoever this may be has plainly survived many battles is enough to ensure their threats will be taken seriously. So why is he explaining this like I'm a five-year-old reading a DK book? Also, what is that description? Not only is it complete conjecture, 
But even more offensive is that these sort of pedestrian observations are being passed off as insight worth reading and taking up space for. And god, then there's all the adjectives, the embellishments, everything is described as superb, sweeping, impressive, exquisitely detailed, blah blah blah. Um, here's another one. It's an image of Bayek sitting on a camel, and the text says, an Egyptian vista complements our hero's linen-covered camel. So, just describing what anyone with eyes already knows, this portrait by Martin de Chambeau could justifiably hang in a national gallery. Yuck. Now, I'm not disputing that it's a fantastic piece of art, but that's a patronizingly over-the-top thing for anyone to say. And in a book like this, it's also inappropriate, shameless, and stupid. This book already has too much of Ubisoft rubbing its own nipples without the addition of some sycophant jerking them off in the hopes they'll hire him for their next book. But anyway, despite this being my favorite Assassin's Creed art book up to that point, I seriously doubt I'd get it if I had my time again. It's one of those books that's great to look through once, but not worth paying for and keeping unless you're a collector or really do like the art you've seen. And if you are an Assassin's Creed fan and this review kind of has you feeling down, well, hang in there as there is a shining light on the horizon that will be the subject of the next review.